Biodiversity. In nature, nothing exists alone. Biodiversity refers to the variety of living species on Earth, including plants, animals, bacteria, and fungi. While Earth's biodiversity is so rich that many species have yet to be discovered, many species are being threatened with extinction due to human activities, putting the Earth's magnificent biodiversity at risk. Scientists have estimated that there are around 8.7 million species of plants and animals in existence. However, only around 1.2 million species have been identified. In this video we are going to discuss about Earth biodiversity, the loss of biodiversity, and what can be done. First we are going to Earth biodiversity. Diversity divided into some levels. Genetic diversity is the variety of genetics within a single species. Species diversity is the variety of plants and animals in a particular region or habitat. Ecosystem diversity is the variety of environments, animals and microorganisms that interact together. Ecosystems can be big or small, from life in a jungle to life on a plant. One of the biggest and most unique ecosystems is Australia's own Great Barrier Reef. Just how diverse is biodiversity? Mind-bogglingly diverse. The simplest aspect to consider is species. About 1.7 million species of animals, plants and fungi have been recorded, but there are likely to be 8 to 9 million, and possibly up to 100 million. The heartland of biodiversity is the tropics, which teems with species. In 15 hectares, 37 acres, a Borneo forest, for example, there are 700 species of tree the same number as the whole of North America. Recent work considering diversity at a genetic level has suggested that creatures thought to be a single species could in some cases actually be dozens. Then add in bacteria and viruses, and the number of distinct organisms may well be in the billions. Fun facts. A single spoonful of soil which ultimately provides 90% of all food contains 10,000 to 50,000 different types of bacteria. The IUCN Red List tracks the number of described species and updates this figure annually based on the latest work of taxonomists. In 2020 it listed million species on the planet consists of 1.05 million insects, over 11,000 birds, over 11,000 reptiles, and over 6,000 mammals. As Robert May summarized in a paper published in Science, it's a malian version of the Starship Enterprise visited Earth, what might be the visitor's first question? I think it would be, how many distinct life forms, species, does your planet have? Embarrassingly, our best guess answer would be in the range of 5 to 10 million eukaryotes, never mind the viruses and bacteria, but we could defend numbers exceeding 100 million, or as low as 3 million. There are three high-level habitat environments, land, marine, and deep subsurface environments. There are 86% of total biomass in terrestrial environments, followed by deep subsurface 13% and marine 1%. Deep subsurface environments can be terrestrial or below the ocean floor, but represent habitats deep below the surface extending from around 50 meters to thousands of meters below the surface. Do you know? Humans make up just 0.01% of Earth's life. So what's the rest? Plants dominate life on Earth. They account for more than 82% of biomass. In second place is the life we cannot see, tiny bacteria sum up to 13%. Whilst our perceptions are often focused on the animal kingdom, it accounts for only 0.4%. Humans account for just 0.01% of biomass, so we'd need about 70 trillion of us to match Earth's collective biomass. All species are interconnected. They depend on one another. Forests provide homes for animals. Animals eat plants. The plants need healthy soil to grow. Fungi help decompose organisms to fertilize the soil. Bees and other insects carry pollen from one plant to another, which enables the plants to reproduce. With less biodiversity, these connections weaken and sometimes break, harming all the species in the ecosystem. Now we're going to discuss about biodiversity loss and its impact. In the past hundred years, biodiversity around the world has decreased dramatically. Many species have gone extinct. Extinction is a natural process, some species naturally die out while new species evolve. That makes a more philosophical way of viewing biodiversity. 
it represents the knowledge learned by evolving species over millions of years about how to survive through the vastly varying environmental conditions Earth has experienced. Seen like that, experts warn, humanity is currently burning the library of life. Just how bad is it? Very. Human activity has changed the natural processes of extinction and evolution. Scientists estimate that species are dying out at hundreds of times the natural rate. The extinction rate of species is now thought to be about 1,000 times higher than before humans dominated the planet, which may be even faster than the losses after a giant meteorite wiped out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. The sixth mass extinction in geological history has already begun, according to some scientists. In a study published in Nature, Anthony Barnesky and colleagues looked at the time it would take for 75% of species to go extinct across four scenarios. First, if all species classified as critically endangered went extinct in the next century. Second, if all species classified as threatened went extinct in the next century. Third, if all species classified as critically endangered went extinct in the next 500 years. Fourth, if all species classified as threatened went extinct in the next 500 years. These are not predictions of the future. We can think of them as hypotheticals of what could happen if we don't take action to protect the world's threatened species. Then, what can be done? By understanding threats to biodiversity and how they play out in context, we can be best prepared to manage conservation challenges. The conservation efforts of the last decades have made a significant difference in the state of biodiversity today. Over 100,000 protected areas including national parks, wildlife refuges, game reserves, and marine protected areas, managed both by governments and local communities provide habitat for wildlife and help keep deforestation in check. In his 1985 text, Prof. E. O. Wilson concluded, This being the only living world we are ever likely to know, let us join to make the most of it. That call is more urgent than ever. We can all help. Most wildlife is destroyed by land being cleared for cattle, soy, palm oil, timber, and leather. Most of us also consume these products every day, with palm oil being found in many foods and toiletries. So, choosing only sustainable options can actually help, as does eating less meat, particularly beef, which has an outsized environmental hoofprint. While we might not be able to prevent all negative human impacts on biodiversity, with knowledge we can work to change the direction and shape of our effects on the rest of life on Earth. Well, that's all for now. Thank you. Chief Seattle One said, we do not inherit the Earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. Here is some resources used in this video.